Welcome back. Today we're going to be starting work on a stainless steel utility folding knife. In the last episode of our carabiner series, when we were heading out of the cave, Jamie suggested that a great project could be a climber's folding knife, designed with a massive hole for clipping it to a carabiner, a serrated edge, and of course, being made out of stainless steel to avoid corrosion. Now, when you're climbing with ropes, it's important to have a knife with you for an emergency situation where perhaps somebody gets tangled and they need to be freed from that tangle. A very specific length of rope needs to be made or jammed or dangerous ropes are tangled up. It's important that it stays closed when it needs to be closed. It's also important that it stays open when it needs to be open so you don't cut your fingers off. The basis of our inspiration is this Petzl Spartha knife but there's certain things that I've modified as I've been sketching around on the sketch pad. I want a slightly wider blade, a slightly chunkier handle. I feel this one's a little thin. And I also would rather not have this cut out hole for opening it, but a pin like a regular folding knife. Our design is gonna have 11 components. We're gonna be making the blade out of AVL stainless steel. We'll get into the mechanism a little bit later. For now, let's get to work on the sharp bit. Quick interruption to thank today's sponsor, which is none other than the mobile and PC game with hundreds of champions to collect, a super in-depth RPG battle system, and amazing graphics. It's the one and only Raid Shadow Legends. The game benefits from amazing regular upgrades. You can test your strength against other players in the arena, learn about the different champions in the index, and attempt climbing the Doom Tower, where you can defeat powerful bosses like Irigoth the Eternal Dragon, and earn rewards like new champions along the way. They have a very special Valentine's event running until March 4th, and it's called the Raid Love Quest. All you've got to do is download the game from the link down below or the QR code on screen, copy your player ID, then head to raidlovequest.playerim.com where you can play one of their Valentine's themed mini games for the chance to win some fantastic in-game and real life prizes like Valentine's themed Raid Champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. Terms and conditions do apply. Existing Raid players can still benefit using code SAINTVALENTINE23, where everybody can get a small Valentine's gift from Raid to you. Scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description where new players are gonna get a starter pack with this cool in-game loot. Let's get back to the video. So the profile is all ground. We have our 16 millimeter hole in it, but I've left this back end all square so I can hang on to it when we're grinding the bevels. But we gotta take a pause on the blade because we need to wait for some dry ice for the heat treat. And so while we wait, we can have another little deep dive into the mechanism of this original one that allows it to have this central carabiner hole. The key is this little sprung spine component. On pressing this button down, the spine flexes back in here, pivots against this pin, and lifts up, pulling it out of the notch that sits within the blade. It can then fold back down, and it also provides a little resistance and a little subtle retention to prevent it opening accidentally before it clips back to its locking position. So here's a little rough sketch of what it looks like. And what I've decided to try and do so that I can make use of the lovely G10 that I have is make the sprung spine component also the frame that holds the G10 scales together. So it's gonna be this big, long, little L shape. We've got plenty of our ABL stainless left. Since it's the same thickness, we're gonna use it. All right, a little cut and polish. So this is now roughed out. What it is missing is the correct flexibility, the correct springiness 
We need the right springiness, otherwise that is not gonna lift up under finger pressure and you're not going to be able to unlock the blade. My plan is that by using a nice big wheel perhaps, we will cut out material from this inside section so it flexes here, pivots up there to lift it up nicely. But I don't want to do it now because I still have important holes to drill to be able to mount the scales onto the frame. And if I drill those holes, while this is super teeny weeny and thin, then maybe I could end up bending that if something goes wrong in my fixturing. I could probably end up completely destroying it now when we drill our holes, but I only just considered the idea of drilling the holes now and probably should have drilled them earlier too. How we mount this is not gonna be easy. Oh, goodness. Okie doke. That is our dry ice, so we've gotta put a pause on this. Now go back to the blade and harden it. What does dry ice look like? So you're telling me you ordered ice from across the country and they shipped it in a box and it's not melted? Apparently so. Let's have a look. What happens? What's it look like? Don't <laughs> spill it all on the ground. <laughs> that would be funny. Probably shouldn't open it. It's going to make it all melt. Ooh! Oh, man. That's so hot. <laughs> 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 See that cold? Can I feel it? Yeah, like, go on, grip it. Oh, yeah, it's really weird. Oh, <laughs> my... Did that actually hurt? Yeah, it did. It actually it hurt? Like, it, like, sucks your skin, like, inside itself. I know, it's like getting your tongue stuck on a lamppost. <laughs> it's very painful. It's a, a, it actually feels like you're burning your skin. Right, okay, we've got dry eyes. So, we need to do a number of things. First of all, we need to quench the blade. But, with stainless steel, you don't want to just heat it up in the forge and expose it to the atmosphere, and so we need to wrap it in foil. So this is stainless steel foil, and I think this is the most dangerous thing in this workshop. More dangerous than the lathe, the mill, the angle grinder, all put together. This stuff is so sharp. I'm not very good at wrapping birthday presents, so this is probably not going to go well. How tight or how loose does this need to be wrapped? I think it needs to be wrapped very tightly, but I don't know how to wrap it. I think I've actually seen videos where people do this by like making a little letter, drop that in, and then crimp over the rest of it. So I'm gonna kind of do it, like, do it this way a little bit. So this stainless steel foil bag is hopefully going to be somewhat airtight, keeping oxygen away from the stainless steel blade. Though it is stainless steel, and that would make you think, well, surely it doesn't oxidize. When it's hot, it will. And it'll presumably do something bad, which is why people with a lot more skill, knowledge, experience, and smarts than me have been doing stainless steel quenches with the blade wrapped up. In the mailbox she goes. Squeeze all the air out. Ah, oh, What? You forgot to put the returns invoice in it before you've sealed it. They're probably not going to accept it now, when it arrives. You know, that is a funny joke, but you did make me remember one thing. I forgot to drill the hole for the pin. Ah, <sighs> the little thumb pin. I'm unwrapping it. You might think this now goes in the forge and then gets quenched in the oil before it goes into the dry ice. No, no, no. This gets quenched between two aluminium plates clamped together. <laughs> And the reason for that is the aluminium conducts heat quite well, but not as well as the oil. So we're gonna get a slightly cooler quench than quenching it in oil with the added benefit of being able to clamp it straight. It's gonna be on two flat surfaces. You would normally do it with some thick aluminium plates. I only had round aluminium in the workshop. The hot blade is going to go on. Another plate will go on top, and then in a very rough and ready type of way, I will clamp it. The aluminium is gonna suck all the heat out and harden it. The ice comes later. So usually when we are hardening things, we heat it up to about 800 degrees Celsius or so. Well, today, we need to go to a whopping 1,050 degrees Celsius and hold it for 15 minutes. How do I know this? Very smart gentleman who is an author, has a YouTube channel, and has a very handy website, Knife Steel Nerds has a web page with heat treating recommendations for AEBL stainless. 1050 degrees Celsius should look pretty orange, I think. As you can tell, 
We're not gonna be having the most accuracy in the world, but hopefully it gets hard enough to cut a rope when you need it. Three, two, one, in we go. I messed it up already. Jamie, I think it's gonna pop. It looks like when you take a pack of crisps on the aeroplane. Hey! <laughs> I clearly didn't do a good job of uh, getting all the oxygen out of it. Go on, go back down, you silly billy. That's gonna go great when I need to clamp it shut against something flat. It's gonna spew out molten gases. All right, it's go time. Let's see how much I fumble it. Three, two, one, go. What? Oh, yes. Ah! I knew it, something had to go wrong. What is happening? Why? No, God dang it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I told you to flatten the tops of them off. It would have taken 30 seconds. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's maybe the funniest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> Take two. Whoop. 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 Go, go, go. Yes. Oh, Betty, I think we've done it. So, theoretically, it should almost be cool by now. These aluminium billets have got a lot warmer. So, while it's still clamped there, it's on to step two. So, the next step is the cryo treatment. Cryogenic treatment? I don't know. Very cold treatment is about the extent of my understanding of it. After the hardening, we need to put the blade in something very, very, very cold. People will use liquid nitrogen, but the poor man's version today, which will hopefully work, is a little dry ice and alcohol. Why? Because I saw it on a forum post and I, I think it's going to work. Oh my goodness, that's the coolest thing ever. I really haven't done enough research about this to know how safe this is, but I did research what dry ice is. I figured it would probably have something to do with water. It isn't, it's solid carbon dioxide. So I feel like we can just drop it in. How cool. Why, why did I spend all this money on dry ice when just right now it starts snowing? All right, it's been in there a while. It's presumably very cold. There we go. It looks very blade-like. Now for the temper, I can make use of the aluminium again. Clamp that up. Bish, bash, bosh. Ow, ow, ow. Shove that in there. Well, that's tempering. One of the things I want to work on is working out how I want to best affix the G10 scales to either side of our little frame spring piece. So option number one is a Chicago screw. Screws together, you tighten it with a flathead screwdriver, you grind off the excess. Let's test it. Somebody's getting stabbed here, Jamie. Somebody's definitely getting shanked with a screwdriver. See? <laughs> ah, I stripped it already. Let's see what it looks like when it's ground. It feels fairly strong. Is it breakable? I can flex it before it breaks. Can I pull it apart this way? Ow. I like it. I think I'm fairly happy. Oh! Right, found the breaking point. If I'm hanging on a rope and I decide to take my screwdriver and I decide to pry open this folding knife, it's possible that we break the folding knife. Next step is get the holes in this, but that's all we got time for today. Thank you for watching. Please go check out Raid down below, the links in the description. And also please go check out our belt grinders, which have been incredibly useful for getting this far at alexdealco.com. See ya, bye-bye.